fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust and a hearty high-yo silver, the Lone Ranger. In the early days of the western United States, outlaws roamed the new territory. The rocky caves of the hill country made excellent headquarters where they were safe from pursuit by any sheriff's posse. But the masked rider of the plains knew every possible hideout, and his faithful Indian companion Tonto could follow any trail. Together they fought crime and criminals through the length and breadth of seven states, and finally they brought law and order to the lawless frontier. Return with us now to those thrilling days when the West was young. An adventure lay at the end of every trail. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! We're heading for the hill country! Hi, oh, Silver! Away! It was an hour before dawn. The Lone Ranger and Tonto were riding through the broken country in the vicinity of Spanish Springs. Parallel to the trail they followed, at a distance of about half a mile, was a hill famous for its hundreds of caves. Now the hill was only a black smudge against the dark sky. But suddenly, the masked man reined in. Oh, Silver, oh, oh, oh. 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 A light, Tonto. Let oh, me see it. It wasn't there a moment ago. Uh. Looks as though it might have been lit in the mouth of one of those caves. Not right. Remember those stories we heard before we rode here? Ah. There were rumors of strange things happening in this district. Twice men have been found dead near those caves. No one seemed to know who shot them or why. Matt, you strange. That light may have nothing to do with the happenings here, but it comes from the direction of the caves and we're investigating. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. Silver and Scout, guided by their masters, swerved from the trail and plunged toward the dim, flickering beacon in the distance. Silver, a flying white ghost, took the lead. Scout thundered in his wake, straining every nerve to hold the pace. Come on, Silver! The light, as the masked man had thought, shone from within the cave. But as they approached, two shots rang out. The light went out, and a single horseman raced away from the cave's entrance. Get up there! Get him off! Get up! Get up! Oh, Silver. Oh, 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 oh. We, we get fella. Let him go for the present. We can pick up his trail later. We'll see what happened inside. Huh? Careful, Tonto. It's black as pitch in here. Uh -huh. What was that? Me, Mink Light. Find out. A lantern. That's what made the light we saw. Get it lit. Huh? Bring it along and hold it high. I think this passage widens out up ahead. There, a place. A cavern. Looks to be almost the size of a large room. Huh. Watch out. There's a ridge you'll have to step over to enter. Let me see it. You look. 
fellow's been shot. Come on. Maybe him still alive. We'll see. A little closer with the lantern, Kimasabi. Uh -huh. There's no pulse. Him get shot twice. Yes, he's dead. There's no mistaking that. Either one of those shots would have been enough to kill him. Them shots we hear. Yes, and that fellow we saw riding away fired them. We'll get on his trail at... Wait, Tyler. Yeah, that light on this wall here. What matter? Look. Oh. Nature never hollowed out this cavern, Kimosabe. Or if it did, men have altered it since. See how these stones that make up the wall are fitted together? Granite blocks and almost perfectly square. Huh. You can even see the marks left when those blocks were chipped into shape. Them mark plenty old. This was all Spanish territory at one time. That's right. This may have been their work. It's possible that it goes back to a time even earlier than that. The Aztecs could have done this. I uh. wonder what their purpose was. It's possible that... Tonto, hold the lantern right there. If I'm right... What you see? One moment. All right. Now bring the lantern over here. That... That path there. It's a path sure enough, Tonto. But look how it was made. Ah. It enters the cavern by way of the passage. Leads to this wall, then goes directly across the cavern to that farther wall. Why do that? And get an idea. Hand me that rock there. Ah. Here. Your rock. We'll see if I'm right. Tonto, mm, not savvy. Kimasabe, both the Spaniards and the Aztecs were clever at building secret passageways and concealing their entrances. Oh. I can be wrong, but what else would explain this path? Well, maybe you... Uh... Listen. There, there, a tunnel. That granite block across the way swung open, right where this path ends. Now look up here, Toto, where I just struck with this rock. And what there? This spot here, no bigger than the muzzle of a six-gun. When I hit it with the rock, it was pushed in, and a small piece of stone next to it, and exactly the same size, was forced outward. Now, Toto, see. In other words, the door to the tunnel is controlled by a clever system of counterbalances. Just a small pressure here will open that heavy granite block over there. Ah. That heap smart. Press this other piece of stone and the block will close again. We look in tongue? Not now. Now that we've discovered the secret of this cavern, we can investigate the passageway any time. Ah. The longer we wait, the harder it'll be to follow the trail of the fellow who left here. I'll close that entrance. There. Now that the trail's had up, we'll soon have the sun to help us. Scarcely had the masked man and Tonto departed, and two figures detached themselves from the shadows outside. They entered the same mysterious cavern the masked man had examined, cautiously made a light, and bent over the body on the ground. Both had the cruel, grim features of men who lived outside the law. Well, Red, so this time it was Flynn. He saw him cast in his chips for the last time. First it was Sheriff Peters, then Squint, and now Flynn. Nick, you figure it was them two fellas just left here that done it? Who else? I don't reckon. Blast them. I wish we got here just a minute sooner. We could have followed them if you hadn't been in such a hurry. You couldn't wait to saddle up. If we'd waited to saddle, we'd never even know they was here. Yeah, that's so. The boss ain't gonna like this. That ain't all he's not gonna be mad about. Hmm? Them fellas didn't find out about the tunnel, I'll eat my hardware. Look, where one was hidden with a rock. Right where the lever for the door is. Yeah. They had a notion just about where to look for it. There wasn't any way they could have started we was heading here. But them leaving when they did most likely means they found what they was hunting for. Uh, it was my fault, I reckon. If I hadn't dozed off, I'd have seen the light in here sooner. Then we'd never have fixed a light and took the chance of leading strangers to the cave, unless there was trouble. I'm willing to bet he didn't fix the light. Them other fellas did. Maybe. Well, there's just one thing to do. What's that? But the boss told us if anybody found out about the tunnel. Blow it up? Just so. He always said the day'd come when it couldn't be kept secret no longer. Yeah. And if it ain't blowed up, you and me and the boss and all the rest of the boys are likely to get hung so high we could take a chaw from the moon. Yeah, we'll have to go for blasting powder. Uh, we'll get that when we report this to the boss. There's something I'm going to suggest is doing. Yeah? Them fellas that was in here couldn't have followed the tunnel all the way to the end. There was no light in here before you dozed off, was there? I can swear there wasn't. I couldn't have been asleep over five or ten minutes. And it didn't take us long to get here. So you see, they never had time to follow the tunnel and get back. It would have took them close to two hours. That's so. Which same means they had a reason for leaving, but they'll be back. Uh -huh. We'll get the blasting powder, fix it to blow up the tunnel, and wait outside. You mean? <laughs> Just what you think I mean. 
When them fellas come back to snoop around, they're going to get blown sky high. In the meantime, the Lone Ranger and Tonto had picked up the trail of the horsemen who had left the cave just before their arrival. The trail led away from the hill across a wide plateau and ended suddenly at the edge of a sheer cliff. Oh, Silver. Oh, oh, oh. Tonto, he couldn't have deliberately gone over the edge of this cliff. Oh, it, it heaped far down. It's thousands of feet to the bottom. And there's no other trail. Could he have doubled back? Yeah, him not do that. Trail go one way. That's true. Tonto, if I hadn't seen this myself, I'd have said it was impossible. Uh, he didn't double back. Not right. He didn't follow the edge of the cliff in either direction. Ground is fairly hard, but not so hard it wouldn't show the marks of hoofs. Then him go over. Why? Uh, maybe him wounded. We heard only two shots. We found that fellow in the cave had been shot twice. Mm, that's right. And if he'd been wounded, the horse would still have refused to jump. Uh, the valley below must be at least 40 or 50 miles wide. We find many strange things. A cavern with a dead man in it. A hidden tunnel. And now a horseman who apparently disappeared into thin air. Uh. There's an explanation somewhere. There must be. And I have an idea. All those things we've met in the last two hours. The cave, the tunnel, the dead man, the rider we followed. Somehow linked together. And that's what Tonto think. Before we go back to the tunnel, I'm going into Spanish Springs. And what do there? Find out what's being said. Talk to the law if possible. Gather all the information I can. Yep. Yeah. You you wear a disguise? Yes. We'll find a place to camp. I'll put on a disguise, and before I'm through, we'll get to the bottom of this. Come on, get over, Scout. I'll silver away. It was later in the day that a tall, heavy set rancher strolled into the cafe. He headed directly toward a slender, well dressed man who was talking with a group of his companions at the bar. Foley. <laughs> oh, it's you, is it, Benson? Well, gentlemen, as I was saying... Last uh, you, Foley? Don't give me none of them high and mighty ways of yours. Take your hand off my shoulder. I suppose you'll make me. If the necessity arises... You, you... I never did see a fellow that could get me so mad. <laughs> you should learn to control your temper. One of these days, Benson, you'll find it's not healthy to lose your temper with me. You've been talking to the sheriff. Yes, well, I frequently do. And one of these days, you're going to find out it ain't exactly healthy to go talking about me. Indeed. You told Sheriff Peters to question me about the killings there's been. Did I? <laughs> yes, I seem to remember something of the sort. Seem to remember? Why, you... Careful. Don't tell me to be careful. If only when you go making statements like that behind my back, you'd better have reasons that'll stand up. Just what was yours? Oh, there were several. Yeah. For one, you're not very intelligent, you know. You, you... You really aren't, Benson. You're exactly the type to use a gun instead of your head. I ain't your type, but that's what you mean. When I go after somebody, I call them out and meet them man to man. <laughs> so I've heard. But you, you highfalutin skunk, you. Your way is to go sneaking around and knife him in the back. I'll give you exactly five seconds in which to take that back and apologize. You want an apology? I do. Well, here it is. Oh, I'll kick a living daylight out of you. You die for that, Benson. I'm Kate! Hey, Kate, let go! You're pulling my hair! Let go, Kate! Behave yourself, you overgrown idiot, or I'll lift your scalp right off your head. Out! Watch out for Foley! He's strong! I'll handle him! You drop that gun! Oh, my arm! <laughs> Thank you, stranger. That was mighty neat. Sheriff, I'd better order these men out of town before there's a killing. I'll do that. I'll hold them till he gets here. You'll hold them till... <laughs> well? Pardon it, stranger. I just couldn't help it. You never met the sheriff, huh? Well, I know nothing about him except that his name is Peters. Peters? Stranger, that's me. I'm Sheriff Peters. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger drama. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Now to continue our story. 
The two ranchers, Benson and Foley, were ordered to leave town. Then Sheriff Kate Peters, unaware that the stranger who questioned her was a lone ranger in disguise, explained the election of a woman to the office of sheriff. And... You see, stranger, my husband was sheriff before me. When Jim was killed, I told the folks around here I wanted his job until I located the sneaking dry gulcher that thrilled him. The best part of it is, now that I've been sheriff for a spell, folks have decided they kind of like having a woman in office. Yes? Well, why not? Who's going to be fool enough to draw again a woman? The hombre that tried it would get lynched so fast he'd never have occasion to change his mind. Stranger, I've been sheriff for going on a year now, and in just that one year I brought more law and order to this county than all the men folks had done in ten. You ask anybody if that ain't so. You found the man who killed your husband? Not so far, but I ain't give up yet. Is there anyone you suspect? Uh, you'll excuse me, stranger, but that's something I'd rather not say. As I recall the story, your husband was found near the caves south of Spanish Springs. That's right. And several weeks later, another man was found dead in almost the same spot. Say, you seem mighty well informed for a fellow that's new to these parts. Perhaps I'm interested in finding out what was behind those murders as well as you are. Just what business is it of yours? You may learn later. Do you mind answering some questions? Oh, ask your head. I don't have to answer them unless I want to. Very well. Uh, first, are there any ranches on the other side of that hill near the caves? Why, just two. You've seen the fellows that own them just now. Yes? Sure, Benson and Foley, the fellows that give orders to leave town. Another question. Before his death, did your husband say anything that might explain why he was killed? Just one thing. And that? He said he was on the track of one of the biggest gangs of crooks that ever hit this county. Then doesn't that give you a lead? I'd admire to know how. I told you I'd brought law and order to the county. There ain't a gang of rustlers or hold up men to be found from one end of the district to the other. If it was outlaws killed Jim, they've sure cleared out since. But if they haven't cleared out... And all I gotta say is if they've kept undercover for this long, they're too slick for you and me. I'd say there ain't but one man alive could catch him. One man? The Lone Ranger. You've heard of him? <laughs> Shucks, who ain't? What have you heard? Well, he's brought crooks to justice that the law couldn't. He rides a white horse that they say is like greased lightning. He's got a redskin pod called Tonto. Is that all you've heard? Mm, let me see. Horse is called Silver. Yeah, and they say that hombre don't shoot nothing but silver bullets. You ever hear the like? Kate, something tells me the Lone Ranger may help you find your husband's killer. Well, it'd be nice to think so, but I sure ain't planning on it. Take my advice. Huh? If the time should ever come that an Indian named Tonto shows you a silver bullet and asks you to do as he says, you do it. Do it? Stranger, any time the Lone Ranger sends word to me, I'm waiting just long enough to listen. Then I'm acting. <laughs> but you want to know something? What's that? I don't figure I got any more chance of meeting up with that masked hombre than you have. <laughs> and I reckon that's small chance enough. <laughs> The Lone Ranger remained in town for another hour, quietly gathering what information he could. Then he made his way to the place where he had hidden Silver and raced toward the camp where Tonto was waiting. As he reined in, he shouted, Oh, Silver! Oh, fella! Oh! Tonto, get mounted! We're riding! Here, Scout! Where we go? I learned some things in town that were interesting. And I have an idea how those hoof prints we followed this morning disappeared. Uh -huh. Tonto got news, too. Good. We'll check on that trail we lost, and you can tell me your news as we ride. Uh, come on, get over. Let's go. It was noon when the Lone Ranger and Tonto left camp, but it was after dark when the rancher, Benson, hearing the front door of his ranch house open without warning, looked up impatiently. That's you, Clay? I thought I told you. Don't reach for that gun, Benson. Mass. I said don't reach for a gun. Why, uh, uh, That's better. Is this a holdup? It isn't. Th then what do you Did want? Did you think you could get away with it, Benson? Did I? Say, what are you talking about? Who are you, anyhow? Never mind who I am. Just think back to this morning. Huh? Think back to an hour before dawn. Why, you? I see you remember. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. Perhaps you'll recall it better if I tell you. This morning, you went to a certain cave a few miles from here. You found a guard there. You tried to make him tell the secret of the cave, but he refused. You heard horsemen approaching, got panicky, killed the guard, and raced away. I, uh, Don't I, deny it. Yeah, but how could you know? I... It's easy enough to see that the man you killed was a guard. 
There were plenty of signs pointing to the fact he'd been inside the cave for some time. But I don't see how... It was clear you hadn't learned the secret. Because if you had, he would have used it to escape. Instead of racing past me and my companion. Wait. You don't know what you're talking Quiet. about. You... But you I tell you... were confident you hadn't been recognized. But you didn't feel sure that the horse wouldn't be known again. Besides, you wanted to confuse your trail. Listen, Keep I tell still you... till I finish. He rode to the cliff this side of the valley. There, you shot your horse, let it fall to the bottom, and made your getaway on foot. The ground wasn't firm enough to hide the hoof prints of a horse, but it was hard enough so that a man on foot wouldn't leave a trail. You, you can't prove I it. I can prove every word of it. I can show you the trail of your horse to the cliff. I can show you the horse where it lies at the bottom of the cliff. When I found it, I asked questions until I learned you'd been seen riding a horse just like it. What do you want? Benson, I spoke to the sheriff today, but said nothing of the man you murdered in the cave. You, you mean you... Perhaps we can work together. Uh-huh. I know a part of the secret of the cave, a part I'm sure you don't know. On the other hand, you probably know things I don't. We we should go partners. If that's what you wish. I give you my word not to tell the law about that murdered guard. Can I trust you? What choice have you got? You know about the tunnel? How to get in it from the cave? I do. And you'll show me how? Tonight. Then, mister, it's a bargain. Just show me how to get in that tunnel, and I'll show you how to make more cash than you ever seen before. But the two outlaws, Red and Nick, were still keeping watch outside the cave for the Lone Ranger's return. They were well hidden by underbrush, and when the sound of two horses approaching could be heard, they lowered their voices. That them, Red? If they stop at the cave, it is. You fixed the blasting powder, didn't you? Yeah, it's all set. How are we going to touch it off? We we'll have to wait till they get inside the tunnel, then follow behind, only not too close. There wasn't any way I could draw a fuse through the door so it wouldn't be noticed. What if they see us? Give them time to get far enough inside, and they won't. They, they stop at the cave, all right. Wait. Come on. You lead the way, mister. Right. I thought they loose tail there. <laughs> there they go. Uh, and in just about ten minutes, what they found out ain't going to help them none with a few tons of rockets out with them. You <laughs> sure you can catch them in the cave in? They got the whole thing timed. Yeah? I put the powder quite a ways down the tunnel and strung the fuse back along the floor. I figured that allowing for the time it'll take the fuse to burn, we ought to give them just about a ten-minute start. By that time, they should be right where they'll get the worst of it. Good enough. All right. Follow her along, Nick. We'll get closer and see that they don't tear in them. Ten minutes later, a blast shook the tunnel. At the signal that their work was completed, Red and Nick mounted and took to the trail. Two hours later, they arrived at a group of century-old buildings, originally constructed by a Spanish owner. They wore broad grins as they entered the largest building of the group and... <laughs> Evening, boss. <laughs> oh, it's you, Red. Good evening, Nick. Howdy. Well? Well, we've done it, boss. You're sure? We waited till we heard the blasting powder go off, Mr. Foley. They're done for, all right. Even if they ain't, they're trapped in there where they won't never get out again. It seems a pity. To get rid of them fellas? Why, boss? Oh, I... no. <laughs> I was speaking of the tunnel. I meant it seems a pity we had to destroy it. After putting it to such good use for so long. Yeah, it's so... <laughs> You know something, Mr. Foley? Yes? I got a notion one of them two fellas was Benson. It looked a little like him in the dark. And you said you figured he'd been snooping around. Red, a if you're bit. right, it gives me real pleasure to hear it. I wouldn't. What the? The wall! Oh, don't you just move. Benson! Stand where you are. You! Oh, my hand! I oh. warned you. <laughs> oh. You see that oh. shooting, gents? That was my partner here done that. But don't get no more notions. I shoot to kill. Red Nick, you fools. You told me you'd trap these fellows. We heard the blast. I don't see how they They'd got They'd have been successful, Foley, if a friend of mine hadn't found them near the cave. You heard them discussing their scheme and gave me warning beforehand. But I tell when you... When Benson we... and I entered the tunnel, we cut the fuse. The end you lit burned out. Then we ran ahead, took most of the blasting powder, and lit the rest of the fuse ourselves. You heard an explosion, all right. And in the tunnel, it sounded loud. But it didn't do much damage. Why, you... And the blasting powder we helped ourselves to blew open this end of the tunnel. Right. Careful, Foley. Benson, I'd like to... <laughs> sure. I can guess what you'd like to do. Hollis did figure you were smarter than me, didn't you? Well, I wasn't so dumb. that when I seen you drill the sheriff when he came to that cave, that I didn't guess you was up to some crooked game. You saw that? <laughs> How else do you figure I got wise? And if you're thinking of making a break for it, Foley, you'd better change your mind. 
I doubt that Benson would hesitate to do exactly what he said. Shoot to kill. He would. And if you doubt it, Foley, just think this and over. Who done for Flynn, the guard you had in the cave, and for a squint afore him? You killed those men. <laughs> sure. Sure I did. Now remember that if you're figuring in to try something. Now look, fellas. Keep still. <laughs> but men, you came through the tunnel. You must have seen what's there. There's enough for all of us. We can throw together. We saw it. Dope that you've been smuggling over the border. We, uh... We'll take you and Benson as partners. You've been using that tunnel to get dope to and from your house without suspicion, haven't you, Foley? Yes, yes, but then... And then what... you've had your organization distribute all over the West. You haven't sold any in this county because you were careful to keep the trail from leading to you. Uh, but can't we talk this over? Nope, because we're taking over. That's where you're wrong, Benson. Kate, the law. I'm taking over. Come along, boys. Me bring law. Good work, Tonto. Hey, ain't you Benson, the fellow that... you're trapped along with the rest of them, and a masked fellow led you right into the trap. So you killed two men, did you? And you, Foley, you're the dope-peddling skunk that killed my Jim. No, please. You needn't deny it. We heard you. Mass man, you gave me your word. You said you wouldn't tell the law about them killings. And I kept my word, Benson. You told the law. I didn't. Why, you... Back up there, Benson. My, I've been waiting a good long time for this day to come. Now I've caught me two killers and smashed up a dope ring besides. This is going to be a day I won't never forget. Did you bring Silver along, Tonto? Uh huh. Him outside. Let's go. Hey, masked man. You and your deputies can handle things now, Kate, without us. Adios. That Indian, the masked man, <laughs> who are they? Holy, they're the fellows that fixed it so we'd be waiting outside to hear the truth of things. The redskin come to town early this evening and told me just what was going to happen. But who are they? <laughs> You hear that, Foley? You hear him call his horse Silver? That answer your question? Silver? Well, that... Why, that must have been the Lone Ranger and Tonto. <laughs> yes, so. Them's the names they go by. And from now on, your names are mud. Now, let's get moving for the jail. <laughs> just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.